Hey everybody, this is Eric Mueller, the host of The Eric Mueller Show. You're tuned into the podcast that explores what makes any successful person's inner clock tick by unlocking the most impactful tools within their success portfolio. I'm joined today by Byron Wolf, the founder of CFO AF, whose passion is to equip entrepreneurs with the financial strategies and insights needed to supercharge their business growth and elevate their financial success. Let's head on over to the interview. Byron, welcome to the show. Ah, oh, dude, that was an amazing intro. Like I I feel like a superman just from you explaining what I do. That was perfect. I need that on my website. <laughs> man, well, it, part of it is. So it's, it was helpful. But <laughs> but man, but Byron, so so glad to have you on, man. And and before we really dive deep into this entrepreneurial story of yours and your expertise in the finance space, we want to know what makes up your success portfolio. So listeners out there, if you're new to this show, let me give you some quick background. I look at it like an investment portfolio that's, you know, the compilation of investments that lays foundations for your financial goals. So Byron here, you know, finance guy, probably makes sense to hear it that way. Well, here on the Eric Mueller Show, I want to discover how successful people like Byron invest in themselves and build that foundation for their success. So Byron, start us off here. What are some skills or traits, habits or mindsets that make up your success portfolio? All right, I'm, I'm going to steal from what you just said because that, that you, you said it very, very eloquently. And I love what you said, investing in yourself. Like that has been the tenet of what I've done for so long. Uh, is I do, I invest in myself, I'm going to conferences, I'm networking, you know, I'm, I'm taking education stuff. Like I am the, I'm a salesperson at heart. So I'm the easiest one to sell. You send me a course that's like, Hey, learn to do this quickly. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. I'm, I'm sold. Let's run. So, you know, I, I love investing in myself. You know, I, I went to school, got my degree, uh, got the extra hours, got the CPA, the CPA, you know, it's, it, it is, it's just letters, but it gets you in the door. Uh, you know, it's like, and you know, this, like when you got that doctor in front of your name, people are like, oh man, I got to stand up a little straighter, you know, throw a little, <laughs> throw a little swagger in my step. So right. like having those, it matters guys. You, you have to validate yourself. You have to have something to stand behind. Your reputation is everything. Uh, you know, like your history, what you've done, huge things. So to me, it's it's about investing in yourself, uh, like wearing what you've done, what you've learned, what you've been through, you know, wear that on your sleeve. It's it what it is what makes you who you are. Embrace that and roll with it. I think that's that's probably one of the most important things. Yeah, Byron, I love that. And I think truly what what I honestly thought of when you, when I first saw your screen here with the backdrop you have, you know, and the audience, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this right now. He's got this beautiful backdrop for the podcast. And it really, it really encompasses like that swagger. You know, it's like that is, you're wearing that on your sleeve. You're, you're proud, you know, but you're, it's not in a, it's not in a way that's, you know, disingenuous or boastful. It's just, you gotta be, you gotta be confident in what you're doing. And what you do at your company is teach people how to be more confident in their finances. And I think, I mean, and I share this, that finance is kind of a big topic of anxiety or it's a big piece, you know, within people's relationships, marriages, things like that. Um, whether it be, you know, regarding personal or business, because not everybody is, is looking to start a business or not everybody wants to own, you know, that piece of financial uh, acumen in their life. But what advice might you have for those people, Byron, to, to minimize some anxiety around finances and become a little more confident? Is there anything that, you know, they can, they can go to? I mean, obviously, they could, could, they could talk with you personally, but is there any resources they can access, you know, books or any, anything that you've uh, found to be effective for people you've worked with? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just in general, any book, self-help, educational, you know, business books, things of that nature, constantly read. I read every single day. Um, I read fiction and I read nonfiction. I mean, you, you know, I'm, I'm a huge reader. I think it's huge. If you don't like to read podcast, books on tape, do something, educate yourself in some way, love books. So, you know, very general. I like that. Uh, if you're into business, there are some amazing books that are out there. You know, read about EOS. Like that's that's been a huge thing lately. Um, I will uh, I will teach you to be rich is an amazing book. Uh, it's it's a little bit complicated in the topics, but if you can muddle through it, great book, amazing book. Um, you know, if you don't like that, who moved my cheese? The one thing like there's great books out there. So you know, hit up a top ten list and and just start absorbing those. That's everything. 
Uh, but if you're if you're not in the business, uh, you know, I think self helps huge, right? And I think being very particular in how you spend your time uh, and being very deliberate in your decisions is huge. So even if you're not in entrepreneurship, you're just you know you're it's just not your thing. Uh, but you found a job that you love, you know, you found a career that like really fills you up. Then I would just encourage you to be super deliberate in your actions, right? And so one of the questions I get I get asked a lot is they're like, yeah, you know, it's just really hard for me to budget myself. You know, it's really hard for me to like, you know, have money left over at the end of the day. And I get that. And like, I'm here to tell you budgets suck. Like, I am not a fan of budgets. Throw them out the window. Like, look, just be deliberate in how you spend. You know, if you know I've got, you know, I got $5,000, right? You know, and, and for my month, I got five grand. Like be very deliberate in what you spend it on, because if if you're limited in what you have, once you spend it, it's gone. Right. And so if you're out and you're like, oh, man, I kind of like this shirt, you know, but it's OK. Don't buy it. Like if you don't love it, don't do it. Like do the things that really make you happy that you really love. I would say if you look at something, you're like, yeah, I like it. I'd like to have it like make sure at least twice, maybe three times that that occurs and then make the purchase. Because a lot of times when you walk away from the purchase the first time, you'll never come back to it. You know, but if you buy everything the first time you see it, you run out of money. And then when there's something you really love that you really want, now you're struggling and now you have this remorse of what you spent it on. That's not fun to live that way, right? You should enjoy everything that you have. So just be deliberate in your actions and what you spend your money on and what you spend your time on, right? Because we're all exchanging basically money for time, you know, time for money. Right. So, you know, be deliberate in that and like embrace those things, do stuff that you really enjoy, uh, you know, and if that's doing something for somebody else, like that's great. I think everybody should have some charitable aspect in their life, you know, and I don't care how you do it, like do something for somebody, donate some money, whatever that looks like for you do that. Right. Because that's going to have a lot of give back to yourself uh, emotionally, mentally, everything else. Uh, but then enjoy what you do. Right. Because, you know, it's that's what that's what life's about. You know, I'm not saying that everything should be enjoyable, uh, but you should have enjoyable aspects of your life. If you're miserable 50% of the day, you got to change your, change what you're doing. And that's just not not a way to live. Yeah, not a sustainable thing. That That's certainly probably can resonate with some of you out there listening that you might feel that way. And if that is the case, you know, I don't think no matter what age you are, it's probably not a, a panic. Don't hit the panic button yet. Because I want to ask Byron now, you know, a little bit about his entrepreneurial story and how he got to this point where he's now the CEO AF, you know, that's, that's got some, that's, that's some gumption there. That's some force as far as what that is. And he, he is able to help people now with their finances. Was that always something you thought you'd be doing, Byron? Obviously you have a CPA now. Did you think that you would be where you are now 20 years ago? No, no, not at all. Like, you know, I, I've, I've changed so many times, you know, when I was in middle school, I thought I was going to be a secret agent. You know, I literally had like a four year period where I avoided all pictures because I didn't want any like history out there of like, you know, me in pictures <laughs> or me in something because I just was completely convinced I was going to be CIA or some foreign asset, you know, something crazy. Right. And so I avoided pictures. I was that bought into this idea. Uh, and then, you know, got into high school, was, you know, decent at sports. So, I, you know, then I decided I'm going to play pro football, right? I'm going to follow my dad's footsteps. I'm going to get my scholarship. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be this big footballer, right? Uh, so then, you know, went to college, didn't work out. Like, you know, I, I I got to try out. I got to be around a bunch of just amazing athletes. Uh, you know, I was at UT Knoxville. Peyton Manning was there, national championship. So just around amazing group of guys. But that wasn't in the cards. Didn't happen for me. Uh, so, you know, I tried all these other things. What I did know is I was an absolutely horrible employee. And so if you're an absolutely horrible employee, go be an entrepreneur because, you know, you can always fire yourself, but chances are you're probably not. Right. But if you're a bad employee, yeah. somebody's going to fire you. So like go do business on your own. Be, you know, do the gig work. Like if if you don't have a business, something you want to do, go somewhere and be your own boss, do your own thing. Until you figure it out, like, and when you find something that you're passionate about, but also makes money, and you can turn that into a business, you know, it's not always going to work. Like, in fact, I would argue you're probably going to fail multiple times before you're successful. Like, it, you're going to love that. And you're going to enjoy being there. And like, instead of hating the fact that you're working 35, 40 hours a week for somebody else, you're going to work 60, probably 70 hours a week 
but you're doing it for yourself and you get to see the direct results of what you're doing. And I'm telling you from experience and not everybody maybe is like this, but from experience, I would much rather put 60, 70 hours a week working for myself than 30, 35, 40 hours for somebody that's not me. Yeah, that's just me though. Right. No, and I, I think that also I, it resonates with me too because you know I'm currently still working full time, but all these other things doing on the side, I mean, that's extra time. You wouldn't be dedicating your time to that if you didn't enjoy that. So I think people that are thinking in an entrepreneurial way or just think of the hobbies that you like or the things that you're passionate about, there could be a business model behind that. There could be something that's needed. Byron and I were just talking pre-episode about you know, some, some things in the pharma industry that there might be opportunities for. So there's, you know, and it comes from the people that you talk with as well. So you mentioned, you know, kind of surrounding yourself with the right people too. And I think that's, you probably hear the, the popular quote that, you know, you're the, the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. I, I think that really is true. And it doesn't have to be physical time, you know, people that you interact with via the phone calls or social media, people that you're just, the people that put their thoughts into your brain on a consistent basis, it's going to resonate with you over time. And I think a unique thing about your company here, Byron, is that right on the website, it says you're the only fractional CFO advisory firm. What is a fractional CFO? Is that an easily definable term? And why might an entrepreneur or small business owner need one like you? Yeah. So we, we noticed a big miss uh, in, in the CFO space. So there were so many businesses that were really too big to be handling their finances on their own, handling their accounting, their bookkeeping, all this. And so they would piecemeal this out. You know, they'd have, you know, maybe a CPA they spoke to twice a year. They have this this bookkeeper that was, you know, that was handling their stuff. They're also handling 20 other people's things and just not really focused on them. They were just doing that particular task. And then maybe they had a couple of buddies that were good for finance purposes that they would reach out to and, hey, man, this is what I'm thinking of doing. You know, what do you think? Uh, and then for like raising funds, they had their banker that, I mean, really didn't know anything about raising funds either. So they'd call them, hey, I need a million dollars for whatever this idea is. And they're like, yeah, that's amazing. You know, like, let's put an application in. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, you know, so you had all these needs and they were just not really being met. And so we said, hey, how can we bring this high level CFO to all these companies? And, and I'm not talking small companies. Some of our companies are, you know, they are, to, you know, technically small, you know, they're at that million to 3 million range in revenue. Uh, but some of these are, you know, they're 20 to 40 million in revenue, but they're just not really there to bring on that full-time CFO. Or maybe they just want to be a little bit more strategic in how they spend their money and they don't see the full-time CFO. So we can step in on that fractional basis, right? You're getting that high level CFO, but only for what you really need it for. And so I, I figured this out. I knew this was a need. I talked to multiple CFOs and I would ask them, like, what does your day look like? And the crazy thing is a lot of them, like half their day was super low level stuff just to kind of fill the day, you know, and then and they didn't like it. Like it wasn't enjoyable for them. they wanted to be at the high level, but they're like, yeah, hey, I'm getting paid for 40 hours a week. I'm going to put 40 hours a week in, you know? And so we're able to come in, we're putting in, you know, that five, 10 hours. I've got multiple people underneath me that, that they're filling like their highest and best use uh, for all these companies. And so instead of charging them CFO rate, you know, if they need a bookkeeper, they're paying a bookkeeper rate for bookkeeper quality work. They're paying a controller for controller level work. You know, and then I step in at that high level and do the advisement. And then I have a network that allows me when they say, hey, I think it's time to raise capital or I think it's time to fund this deal or whatever. I can reach out to my network and make those opportunities known so that, you know, they have really a bunch of strategic partners instead of just one guy that they keep leaning on to get this stuff done. So fractional is just kind of exactly like what it sounds like. It's a, it's exactly what you need and you're paying for exactly what you need in that exact moment. And that's it. It's pretty simple. Yeah. That sounds like an awesome business model. And really it's not a way that I've thought about that at that point, because you can, you can kind of think if you have a business or if you're thinking about just the structure of, you know, C-suite employees, you know, it doesn't sound cheap. I mean, you don't think if you're in the growth stage or something like let's, let's bring on the CFO that's had 15 years experience and like, pay them out the butt to be able to help us get to the next level. Like that might not be the choice people want to make so they could come with you and you can help them figure out what they need. And then that also is going to help them, you know, know how much they need to spend and it just helps them in the long run. You can connect them to other people. So it sounds like you're really doing a good thing with the, with the business you have, Byron. And I'm glad you brought up revenue. I'm glad you brought up that because a lot of you listening, you probably noticed the title on this show. 
up to this point has not been, you know, laden with a bunch of profanity. And that's kind of by design. You know, it's kind of a professional podcast. But I brought Byron on today because I want him to tell us why we need to stop giving a fuck about revenue. I want him to tell us why that needs to not be the pinnacle goal with a business. And he's going to take it away. Yeah, dude. I, and it, this is, I am very, very passionate about this. So uh, if you have sensitive ears, you got kids in the room, get them out. Like I, I'm going to get passionate on this one. So I believe, and this is my personal opinion, backed by a lot of businesses that have done really well. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to toot my own horn here. I know what I'm talking about. But when you focus on revenue, all you're doing is you're saying, hey, I want to be the biggest swinging, you know what, in the room, right? If that's what you want, if you want to be the braggart, you want to talk about your revenue, you want to show everybody like, I'm I'm Billy Badass, you know, I'm doing 30 mil in revenue, all right? Well, here's the problem. When they look at your actual business, when they go a little deeper and they see, yeah, man, you're doing 30 mil in revenue, but you're losing money every year. You know, or you're making a hundred grand. Like, dude, I can go take a job making twice what you're putting down and not work the hours you're working, not have all the stress that you're having. So to me, profits everything. Fuck revenue. Revenue is good. It's important to have it come in because that's gonna what's gonna allow you to make the profit that you need to make. So revenue is important in that aspect, but it's not the end all, it's not the scoreboard, it's the brag. It's the fancy car that you can't afford, right? It's the supermodel model girl that you take out, but like you can't afford to keep her. You can't afford to keep her just in shoes, right? You know, it's a good thing. You take her to your high school reunion, you know, and then you move on, right? You know, like, you know, it's it's the brag, right? And if that's what you're about, if that's all that's important to you, go for it. I can tell you it doesn't build a big business. It doesn't build a sustainable business and it doesn't make you happy. But profit Profit is what you get to take home. Profit is what you get to keep. Profit is what you get to spend on the fun stuff, right? And so, you know, you can you can have a big revenue. That's great. But if you don't have a big profit to go with it, you're not operating that business efficiently. And if somebody looks under the hood, so to speak, they're going to see that. And they're going to see that you're not the business person that you're putting yourself out with. So if you can focus on profit, and all you got to do, you got to pay attention to the details. It's all the stuff that's in the middle of a PL. If you know, you know, profit and loss statements, revenues at the top, profits at the bottom. It's it's managing all this stuff in the middle, right? And we just said a minute ago, you know, budgets throw them out the window, but this is where you got to pay attention to what you're spending. And so be very strategic in what you spend so that at the end of that sheet, the end of that profit and loss, the end of the day, you're taking home a bunch of money. That is the real scoreboard, right? Because that's what matters. If you're taking home a bunch of money, you're crushing it. I would much, much rather take home a million dollars a year and have a three or four million dollar revenue business than have a thirty million dollar or a forty million dollar, you know, revenue business and be taking home the same million. Because that thirty, forty million dollar business is coming with a bunch of headaches and a bunch of work, and a bunch of people, and a bunch of responsibility, whereas that streamlined three or four million that's taken home a million dollars, that thing is scalable. I can grow that. People want to be involved in that. They see the potential that's involved in that. I promise you, when you're trying to bring in partners or strategic employees, and you can say, hey, we did four million in revenue, but we profited a million bucks, they're going to be like, man, that's fantastic, right? But that company that's 30, 40 million to me, like, and I'm a shark in this, when I see a 30, 40 million dollar company and they're taking home maybe a million bucks, I see that as a takeover or, hey, I can come in and charge you a whole bunch of money to fix your shit because you can afford it because your profit margin's horrible. So when I come right. in there and I double, triple it, which is super easy in a 30 million, you know, 40 million revenue company that's making, taking home a million dollars a year, that's super easy for me to get in there. And I can promise you, I'm not the only one, and I'll be super upfront about this. I'm going to charge you a lot of money because I know that I'm going to make you a ton more money than what I'm charging you. So, right. you know, be smart about what you spend. Focus on what you take home because that's what matters. So many people are making good money now, two, three hundred thousand dollars you know, a year in a job, and they're still like struggling with credit card debt. You know, they're living paycheck to paycheck, right? And so what they've done is they've overspent what they had. They didn't focus in the middle. 
They were just focused on getting 300,000 and everybody know that they're making $300,000 a year. And these people are looking for the dollar menu at McDonald's that that ended four years ago, right? You know, they don't have any money because they've spent it all already. They have all these obligations. They didn't spend smart. So if you can make 200,000 and you're going to save $100,000 a year, you can do a lot of fun stuff with $100,000, right? But if you're making 300 and you're spending 320,000, you're constantly asking mommy and daddy or aunt and uncle or, you know, Uncle Sam to loan you some money. And that's a hard place to live. That sucks. That is not a fun life at all. So to me, profit's everything. It, it is absolutely the end all. It's a scoreboard. It's the real brag. It's the, it's the, it's the good relationship. It's the strong friendships. It's the great network. Revenue, that's the brag. That's the the very surfacey level. You know, those are the the steroid muscles. You know that you you know that you you got to get a pump on before you take the selfie and the uh, you know for your Facebook, your Instagram. You know, it's not the real life uh, that you want. You know, it's the fake life. So profit is everything. Profit is the real life. Profit is the real happiness. Stay away from the revenue. It's important. It's just not nearly as important as profit. Yeah, I, I think that's such an important lesson to to learn. And if you need to listen back to that, please rewind and listen to it again because I think I mean I'm. I will need to do that because it needs to be something that's so forefront in your mind. And I think when you look at like an annual report from a company, a company's 10K, and yeah, you do see that revenue right at the very top. But if I scroll down, if I'm like thinking of an investment or you're like doing an assignment for school and you assess this company's financials and I see a negative net profit, I'm out. Like that's what is, what are you doing? And obviously you don't know the inner workings of the business or what, you know, are they trying to grow? Are they, are, is their spending outpacing their revenue right now and they're going to grow later? But at that present moment, like they're not taking home money. So if you worked the job and, and at the end of the year, you didn't have money and even you had negative money, that is not, I, that's not ideal. So yeah, I think that that's such a, such an important piece there, Byron. I'm, I'm happy that, that you've shared that with us. And I am, I'm curious to ask now, kind of a thought I had when you were talking through that is how are you able to manage the middle? Maybe, maybe let's just look at it from a personal standpoint, not necessarily budgeting, but how can you maybe keep track of where your money's going? If you're bringing in 10K a month, let's say, and you're, and you're ending the month and you have 500 bucks and you already know like your rent is not that much. You're like, where's this, where did this money go? What, what would be some practical steps that, that a person could take to, to see where their money is actually going? Yeah. Well, you, you've already answered it. Where did the money go? Right? So you make 10 K you got 500 K $500 left at the, at the end of the month. That's the question. Where did the money go? What did I spend this on? You know, and here's the crazy thing. Like I've had this conversation with people. You know, Zach saying different numbers, but basically the same scenario. 10K, $500 left at the end. Man, how did, how did I get here? All right, exactly. How did you get here? Well, what do you mean? How'd you get here? What'd you spend it on? You spent $9,500. What'd you spend it on? Man, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. would you I forget? Know. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. Just, <laughs> you blacked man, out? I just, yeah, I just spent it, man. I don't know. You know, it just, I just spent it. All right, well then let's take it. Let's, let's, let's do a day in your life. Let's look at what you do throughout the day, and then let's see if it makes sense, right? And so I'm not picking on, on the people that do this. If you're a Starbucks everyday person, I apologize in advance. I am not. Like, I just don't think coffee's that great. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so if, if that's your thing and you're spending 5, 10, 15 bucks a day at the coffee shop, that's going to add up very quickly, right? And so when you see what the actual numbers look like at the end of that, even if you're, you know, five bucks a day, you know, 30 days in a month, like you can do the math. You that spend 150 up. bucks on coffee. Like, you know, you could buy a freaking Keurig and stack it with, you know, with coffee <laughs> for that, you know, and like, yep. and credit, you know, and, and live the rest of your day out. So like, look at that, you know, look at what you're, what you're doing, like start paying attention to the little things. And so, and I don't care which side you go on. There's people that say, Hey, pick your biggest thing, knock that off, work your way down. There's people that say, start at the bottom work your way up, take your smallest expense, eliminate it, work your way up. I say, find the thing that makes you the happiest, move that to the side. I love this. I have a, you know, I, I'm, I'm a motorcycle guy, not a car guy, but let's say you're, you're a big car guy and you're like, I love my whatever, you know, my, my Audi. So I, I love my Audi. I love driving it. This expense is worth it to me. Cool. Have it. Move that over to the side. Leave that alone, right? And so start picking out the things that you love. Leave those alone. Keep doing them. You know, if you absolutely love that $5 a day Starbucks addiction, stick with it. If that's what makes you happy, do it. 
you know, it's not the end of the world, right? So eliminate the things that you don't really care about. You know, if if instead of uh, hitting the grocery store on the way home, you consistently go by Boston Market or something like that, and you just don't like it, you're just being lazy, then like get some groceries, bro. Like get some groceries, not that hard. You know, so find the things that don't really make you happy and eliminate those. Same thing in business. There's things that are in your business that you don't love, that you don't need, right? I see it all the time. And so one of the easiest things to find is you go in and you look at your office expenses, right? And so I tell you this, and I'm going to go big on this one. So COVID taught us you don't need to have an office. Most people, you don't need to have an office. So if you're dropping four or five grand a month or, or much higher dollars than that for an office that you don't even want to be in, cut that out. You know, it's not a status symbol. If you don't need it, don't have it. It doesn't make sense. Get rid of it. You're going to get rid of the utilities, you know, all of the upkeep, all this other stuff, you know. But office is a very easy one. Like if you're buying new pens every week because you lose pens, stop losing pens. You know, like, I mean, you know, like, this, simple. It, yeah, it, it, these are simple things. You know, eliminate the things that don't make sense. You know, like if you... Uh, if you have a business and you have multiple employees and, you know, your employees have have cards that they're using and every day they hit the gas station and they buy themselves a Gatorade and a snack and some other junk while they're filling up their company vehicle, cut that out. Like, you know, you got to have boundaries, you know, tell the guys, hey, man, I'm not paying for your Gatorade and your Snickers and your Cheetos or whatever. Like, you know, that that is not part of this. That's not part of your agreement. Like, if you're going to do that, I'm going to take your card away. Like, you can't have that stuff. Right. It does matter. So some of these little things are going to make a big difference. If you've got a marketing budget and you're exceeding 10 percent of your revenue on your marketing budget, it better have a huge return. So I'm not one that's going to tell you not to spend money on marketing. It's one of the few things that I am a huge fan of. I say spend money on marketing. But if you're not getting a four to one or better return on that, you better hire somebody else. Right. So I'm not saying don't spend the money because, again, I'm not a big budget guy. But make sure that what you're spending money on is smart. Make sure it's strategic. And if it's designed to bring you a return, make sure your return is coming in. And don't hire family members or buddies unless that's the best person for it. Because they're really hard to fire and they will take advantage. You know, if they're not good at their job, they're going to assume that they're good. So if your buddy has a marketing firm and he's giving you a two to one or less return, get rid of it. Go to somebody else. You know, you're doing them a favor. I promise you, you're doing them a favor. Hey, man, you suck at your job. You should find something else. <laughs> you know, they're either going to get better or they're going to find something else. Like, it is what it is. You know, so don't think about the short-term, like, discomfort of it. Think about the long-term gain. You know, because if you can be doing something better, you need to be doing it. And you don't have to fix everything at once. Fix one thing. One thing. Fix that one thing. Get it good, move on to the next. You know, we talk a lot about this 1% better rule, and I'm a huge fan of that. Like, yep, that, yep. Yeah, that's if you can do that, if you can just get 1% better, it's going to change everything. If you can do 1% better a week, like they talk about 1% better every day, if you do 1% better a week, it's going to have a massive impact on what you do. You know, just do that, just do the small stuff, and it'll start adding up, adding up, adding up. And it's going to be better. I promise. Yeah. And I, I think one, one point I want to highlight as well, and you did mention this, but we talked about it pre-interview. For those of you thinking about budgeting, whether it's personal or business, or just like keeping track of your money more or less, you don't have to limit yourself. You don't have to take away the fun things. Byron is saying the exact opposite of that. Put your money into what makes you happy. Obviously, there's the necessity expenses, but you might be able to make those, you might be able to tailor those in a more fun way, possibly. There, I'm, I'm thinking right now of things that, that I spend money on that I know that you know, I probably could cut some things out. It's, 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 it's easier said than done, but, but yeah, that's definitely a good, a good thing to keep in mind. And, and Byron, furthermore on, you know, what your company does for the clients, I'm talking to the people who are listening right now that might be asking themselves, am I an ideal client for you? Am I a dream client for CFO AF? And I'm, I want to ask you, what makes a dream client for you? Who are you looking for? What type of person or business do you think you can best help with what you do? Yeah, so honestly, the ones that are amazing at at what they do, uh, but have a strong hate or massive dislike of the finance, the accounting, all the other stuff. If you hate it, stop doing it. You know, hire somebody to do it and focus that time on stuff you love. 
I can tell you right now, for me, if I got to do something I hate, like I'm going to be miserable the whole time. It feels like it takes forever. I'm not happy with the results. Like it's all negative. So like, I don't do a lot of stuff that normal people, like I don't, I haven't mowed my yard in like forever, like decades. You know, I don't, I don't clean. Like, I mean, all the stuff that you don't enjoy doing, stop doing it. Like <laughs> do the stuff you enjoy that makes you money, pay somebody else that does enjoy it, you know, to do it, like find somebody that that's their passion, let them do it. So our ideal client is that person that that's in a growth stage, right? Like, you know, if you have no interest in growing your business, increasing your profitability, I am not the person for you, right? I, I want people that are driven. They want to they want to grow something. And I'm not saying you're doing it just to make a ton of money and like go swim in your, you know, your pool of gold. If your goal is to build your massive company, sell it for a big exit, and then do charity work for the rest of your life because you want to retire early and do nothing but charity, man, I'm right there. Like I love that. Like I love the charitable aspect of that. You know, and if that's what you if that's what you want to do and you're you're doing something you're passionate about so you can make the money to go that. Like, I love that client. That person's amazing because they got real purpose. Uh, but if you're trying to grow, you want to do better with your business, you want to do better with your employees, you know, you just hate the finance, you hate the accounting, or you just flat out don't really understand it. And you're just kind of muddling through being miserable. I love those because I can give you clarity in your finance. I can give you clarity in your accounting. I can give you clarity in the financial controls that you need for your business and I will set your map in place so that you know exactly where you're going to be next month, next year, five years from now. You know, one of the things that we talk about with all of our clients is everything is a five-year exit plan. I don't care if you want to exit in five years, but five years from now, you are going to be ready to exit. You are going to be at the max multiplier that if somebody were to come in and say, hey, I like what you're doing, I like your business, you're going to get the maximum money that you can possibly get because you're operating at peak efficiency on the financial side, on the accounting side, you know, on the on the CFO side. We're going to make sure that you're there. We're going to walk you through those steps because what gets you to a million doesn't get you to three million. What gets you to three million doesn't get you to 10 million. So we're going to walk you through those steps. We're going to be right there with you to help you to make those decisions and make the changes and to focus your attention where it needs to be focused at. So I love the clients that want to grow and that they are passionate about what they do because I know they have the longevity, but I don't want the ones that think they know everything about finance or accounting and they have no clue because I'm not going to fight you on it. I'm here to help you. <laughs> so. Yep. Yep. And I'm sure we can all think of people like that or, you know, you think... I always think it's helpful to come from an open mind and, and be aware of, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So you can't come in thinking that you, I mean, even if you think you might know it, just be open to the fact that you might not know it, in other yeah. words. But yeah. Byron, uh, you know, last thing on that, is there a biggest success story? I mean, without naming any names or any companies, is there a story that comes to your mind of, of the client or business that you've helped that is like, you know, you're just so proud of that, of that particular encounter? Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a few of those. Um, like, so really, really recently, a client that we're working with, um, we've been working with them, you know, off and on uh, for about a year. Uh, you know, so we've we've been kind of in and out with them. Uh, and they just announced that they did uh, more than doubled their business uh, in the last, I think, 11 months. Uh, so they you know, went from 8 million to 15 million uh, and quadrupled uh, their profitability. Uh, so their profit actually forexed, which, you know, is, is very good. They're on a good plan. Like, you know, it just, you know, definitely focused them in, uh, you know, so super proud of them. Uh, that company has literally probably the best culture I've ever seen in any company. So when you talk about their strategic edge, these guys could write the book on culture. They have, I mean, their, their staff is so dedicated. I absolutely love it. They're passionate about what they do. They're passionate about their people. And so it, the, the money, it's important. You know, it does matter. Uh, but what they have built with their company and what they have built with their team is, it, it's it's amazing. I get, they, I freaking love these guys to death. Uh, you know, they're, they're an amazing company. I love them to death. I could, couldn't be more proud about them. And I won't call them out, but I don't think they would care, but I won't because I don't have permission. Uh, and then like kind of the success story, we want to talk about that. We did uh, start working with a company and they had 100% adopted the revenue is everything model. 
Uh, and so when we come when we came in, they were uh, they were about 13 million, you know, like 13 and a half million dollars uh, took home a whopping three hundred thousand dollars in profit. So pretty bad, pretty bad uh, I, for the last two years running. Uh, they've been under 20 mil in revenue. So we quit focusing on revenue like that was gradual and it, it's increased. They've done well. Yeah. Uh, so we're under, you know, we we hover around that 18, 19 mil. We're slowly growing in the revenue. Uh, last two years in a row, they've taken home more than $4 million in profit. Uh, so wow. uh, one year was pretty close to five. The other one was a hair over four. So, you know, phenomenal profit margin in this company. And they're continuing to grow, but they're growing very strategically. And we have it dialed in that this company will 100% be a $100 million company Probably, you know, probably before the five-year mark runs out. They've done phenomenal. They've put in the work. They're very strategically uh, focused now. Uh, and they have changed the mindset from bragging about the revenue to uh, strategically spending the profit. I will say that. Uh, the the guys that own this company are, are they're great. I mean, they're probably the most fun you'll ever experience from, from some owners. Uh, because they have the freedom to do that. Like they spend it, you know, not dumb. They spend it on stuff that they love uh, and they have amazing, amazing lives. And one of those is actually pursuing his uh, his passion uh, currently. So he's actually stepped out of the business, pursuing his passion. Amazing individual, literally one of the best people you'll ever meet. Everybody in that company is amazing. Uh, but yeah, an amazing team. You know, and the crazy thing is, is when you quit focusing on the revenue and you focus on the profit and you get your business streamlined, the people that are just hanging on that are not good for the business, they fall apart. They fall away. Right. The people that are good for the business, they believe in the vision. They believe in the culture. They believe in where you're going. They stick it out and your team becomes so much stronger and it's so much more fun to work there. Like it's good for everybody. So byproduct, I'm not saying it's directly related, but I see it all the time. You know, the companies that that increase their profitability without focusing on the revenue man, they, they get the culture, they get it. And it's just a fun place to be. So, you know, I, I love those. I love those stories. Those are good stories. I've got a few of those, but those are just, yeah. no, those are great. Yeah. It definitely paints a picture for what someone might expect if they were to work with you in the future. And that kind of leads me to just a call to action for you, for, for people that, you know, might be a good fit for you. How would they reach out and how would they best contact you to either just, you know, reflect on the interview with you or ask a little bit more about CFO AF and, and what you might be able to do to help them? Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty easy to reach out to. Uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to to take calls, talk to people. I tell people all the time, worst case scenario, if if you're not to the size that that we can work together or if it doesn't make sense, I'm gonna give you some good advice that that will help you get to the point where it does make sense, right? Uh so I'd say reach out to me. I'm on all the social media platforms. Uh the uh I think one of them's the underscore CFOAF. I think other ones uh just the CFOAF. Uh, hit us up on the website, cfoaf.com, uh, short and sweet. Uh, any of those work. Uh, if it's somebody that's thinking about, you know, getting into entrepreneurship, wanting to be a business owner, uh, we created a completely free PDF. It's not a funnel. Like we're not going to say anything at the end of it, uh, if you don't mind me sharing this. But it's uh, the, of course. What it, the what if plan.com. So www.thewhatifplan.com. Uh, it's a PDF. You go in, you can look at it. It walks you through the process from, hey, I think I want to start a business uh, to planning for exit. Uh, it talks about partnerships, you know, operating agreements, LLCs, all that stuff. So it's a quick guide uh, to starting a business and setting it up for, uh, you know, for for exiting well. Uh, so yeah. that's a great place to go as well. Perfect. Yeah, Byron. Yeah, we'll, we'll tag for those of you listening. We'll tag all that in the show notes. And and these episodes are always shared across social media and we'll we'll be tagging all the appropriate social media handles for Byron and his endeavors. And Byron Wolfman really cannot thank you enough for this. This episode has been so much fun. You know, this is a milestone guys. Eric Mueller dropped his first F-bomb in the Eric Mueller show. So I think, I think as we talk, we talk pre-interview. Yeah. By Byron is, you know, he's a passionate guy. He's fired up. I, I love that. And I think we can take away from this to stop giving a fuck about revenue and focus on profit. Byron Wolf. Thank you so much, sir. We'll, we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it.